We had a week without rain. We were able to mow the lawns for the first time in four months. And today the sun is shining. Spring is here, so we thought that we'd give you a tour of the garden. We're gonna start in the back garden. This is kind of like our secret garden because not many people know it exists. It's kind of tucked away here behind the Maison de Maitre. Since we moved in almost five years ago, I think the biggest impact we've had here on the back garden is um, ripping things out. <laughs> we had to widen this creek because all the runoff from the village to make its way to the Charente comes here behind our house. Yay. And the first winter we were here, it flooded. And it was only about this wide and about this deep and it could not handle the volume of water. So we dug it wider and deeper and banked up the edge with all the soil that we dug out. And that saved us. The next winter we did not flood. So we actually had a huge clump of bamboo here that needed to come out to make way for widening the creek. Um, and in its place we have planted a hedge. And I bought these plants, they were tiny. Two years ago? Yeah. Two years ago, they were this big, I didn't even know what they were. And they have grown so fast and it's so lovely to see them in bloom. And we can imagine in another three or four years that we're actually going to have a hedge here and it's going to be all colourful and pretty. And it's going to block out the situation, which is our neighbours. Um, they're actually a lovely family. We don't fully understand the situation, but I think it's where the house has been passed down too many times to too many people. And now it's split between too many family members that can't agree on what to do with it. So it's abandoned, which is such a shame. Nobody lives in there. It's a beautiful house. It's a Maison de Maitre like ours. And it's just getting completely taken over by the garden. Our first year we were here, they came and they cleared out the whole garden and cut down all the brambles and everything. And we were like, oh, wonderful. They take care of it. <laughs> that was three years ago. <laughs> so now their garden is coming over to our garden. They're a lovely family though. Yeah, and it's great because we do get to eat all the berries off those brambles. We make bramble pie. So some of the little plants didn't make it. They had to survive flooding, <laughs> drought. So the ones that have survived, I mean, I'm so thrilled that they're here. Um, and we can easily just fill in these little gaps and weed it. Needs weeding. Everything needs weeding.
we built this garden during lockdown. We were, you know, locked down like everybody was and we were desperate to be growing our own food. And so we obviously couldn't go out and, and get everything that we wanted to, to get. So we actually took down as a second floor up in one part of the barn that we don't use. Nobody uses, the cats go up there and that's it. And so all of the posts, uh, they were the, the beams that were running across and then all of the planks around the edges, they were actually the floorboards yeah. in there. We took them out, we built this. We actually, it used to be twice as high and then we filled it with a couple of trees that we had cut down basically, chopped mm. all of them up and put them in as a base. It's called Hugel culture, growing like on a base of, of wood, which like holds in the moisture and, and all of that good stuff. And then we put all the soil on top. And, and we dug the soil from over there. Over there. That's right. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. Remember? Oh my God, wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow. Yeah. yeah, bringing the soil over. And we have added to it with heaps of compost and stuff over time. This was what, three years ago now? Yeah. So this has been our garden for three years. I, as it all settled, as the wood rotted away, we took off the top two layers around the outside, repaired some that were falling apart because obviously it's not made to be outside, you know. We just kind of had to work with what we had. Yeah. And it did work, like it was, it oh, was yeah. great. We've got so many epic veggies out of here. But I mean, the main problem is that we don't come out here yeah. naturally like it's not a part of our life and you can't you can't see the garden from inside it doesn't gardening I think it's it's really easy if you spend a few minutes a day yeah you know if you sp come out with your coffee in the morning and you spend five minutes and just pull a few weeds or see that there's bugs or see that there's a disease starting on one of your plants yeah. you know um and that's how you garden with it feeling like a joy and integrating into your life but this always felt like I'm going to go to the garden you know like it had to be such a big decision and we had to yeah. you know find time in our day for it where it really should just be a place where you come and spend a few minutes to take care of your plants um, and to harvest what's growing you know because we've let courgettes get enormous we've let berries rot like just because we're not out here every day yeah um so this is a huge change that we're making mentally and with the design of our garden. So we really did design this garden to be the potager, like only containing vegetables and berries, food, mm. and be the place to come just for those things. But actually what I'd like to change about this approach is everything really, <laughs> and have the vegetables and the berries and the food be integrated into the garden as a whole. So there's flowers and, and vegetables and fruit uh, all growing together, mm -hmm. creating a beautiful space that you want to be all the time. We're moving this. We're going to move all the soil. Because, man, yeah, the soil is amazing. Like, by now, we have put so much yeah. love and compost into it that yeah. it is just phenomenal. Like, whatever we plant here does grow really well. I mean, these have gone all winter. You can tell that we don't come out here. Like as soon as it got cold and the food wasn't producing, we just bailed. So moving this is going to be is going to be a big okay, yeah, a big right. challenge. Um, but I think yeah. Oh, a big challenge. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge. Yes. Um, you have a digger. I do. Yeah. Do you think your digger can help or? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Just going to use your muscles. The digger is almost as big as my muscles, so I think it would probably <laughs> help. That's not even a joke. <laughs> Um, we have the world's, it's either the world's a tiny digger, digger. Or you've got really big muscles. What are you saying, babe? Look, when you see the digger, you'll know. <laughs> so this is all going to come down. That's right. Yeah, we're yeah. going to have to say goodbye to our lockdown potager. Yeah. Um, and I think it's going to be nice to bring something a bit more permanent and something a bit more integrated into our lives. Mm. We're going to bring it out the front. Yeah. So let's go. Let's go around. There's more. There's always more in this house. There's always more at this property. More, more to do. More to do. <laughs> Jack yeah. used a, a shutter for the gate, which I just love. I mean, it is a really cute little potage. It is. I think we did really well. Yeah. yeah. What happened to the mowing? What, what's up with this? This? Yeah. This uh, wasn't actually my decision. This was the kids. 
they requested that I leave a section of the lawn unmowed so that the bugs and the birds have somewhere to hang out. The bugs and the birds have plenty of places to hang out. <laughs> they do, but I think it's kind of sweet. I tried to give it a nice shape and we saved the bit with the most flowers. Wild well don't you? Quite a rich history, this pile of rocks has. When we moved in, there was actually an outhouse here, which was the original toilet for the Maison de Maître because there was no internal plumbing in there. Uh, and I mean, there wasn't any plumbing out here either. It just went straight into the creek. But we took the outhouse down because we didn't need it and we did need the stone. We used the stone to rebuild the wall at the front of the house. So the stones that are here are not even from the outhouse. These are actually the stones that were the interior wall of our house that have now come and moved back around here. So you just love moving rocks, don't you? Yeah, I really get a kick out of moving rocks. Like a really hot day, there's something about moving really heavy objects from one place to another. I don't know what it is. I think you're a bit crazy. You might be right. <laughs> what is exciting though, not the rocks, but all this nettle. I used to be absolutely horrified <laughs> at the fact that most of our garden was nettle. <laughs> Um, but it's one of those things that you either have to embrace completely or forever be at war and I chose to embrace it completely to the point where we make the best nettle pesto out of it and we eat that actually we could probably start now this is the best stuff to harvest um, you can make uh, fertilizer for your indoor plants or even your seedlings as they're growing out of it it's absolutely incredible. Um, so now we actually leave patches to cultivate nettles. So many people hate bamboo and will warn you explicitly to not put it in your garden. But I love it in our garden and we have so many uses for it. The sticks in the vegetable garden or just how many times have you used a piece of bamboo? I've used bamboo for everything. I've even used it to unblock the old yeah. sewage system. We have neighbours walking past being like can I have some of your bamboo? So we're like supplying the village with yeah. bamboo sticks and yes, we have plenty, come help yourself. So this is our bamboo forest and we have the lovely sound of the creek trickling under the road here. And another entrance to our property, which we have literally never used. Um, have I you, have... oh, you used it when you were carrying bamboo across the road. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Look at this, this is amazing. Look how beautiful it is. I love coming out here. Yeah, hey. it's like really nice. It's like a wee zen garden. It is. What I really want to do actually is suspend a hammock out over the creek, like in that corner. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't that just be so nice? Come sit in the shade, listen to the creek. Yeah, in all your spare time. All my spare time. I have time. got so many jobs for you to do. Like, there is going to be no... No hammock, hammock time. Hammock time, no. I've got lots of jobs to do as well. So no hammock time but for you like, either. Yeah, there is just no hammock time. And then one day, hammock we'll time. share a hammock. <laughs> or hammock time. <laughs> can't touch this. Da, 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 da. No, you da, can't da, touch da, da. Can't touch this. You can put a hammock there all you want. Yeah. Oh my god, that would be so nice. Wouldn't it? it? <gasps> okay, yeah. Hammock. Can you say hammock time again? One thing I'm so sad about, I like it actually hurts my heart, is this cherry tree. So, I mean, it must just be so old now. But we, the first summer we were here, we got a handful of cherries and that was the last time it ever produced fruit. But we're gonna plant new cherry trees. Lots of them, hey. Yeah. Like, yeah. Our front garden. So this is where we're gonna be moving our lives. <laughs> um, and landscaping. And I think we're gonna be bringing back some features that have been taken down over time that we've lost. So what I really want is a beautiful path entryway from the pedestrian gate on the road right up to the front doors of the Maison de Mette. There used to be a circle here. You can see the ground is a little bit different. <laughs> I guess this tree used to be a lot smaller. 
<laughs> which we want to bring back. So we have the, a path leading from the pedestrian gate right up to the steps of the Maison de Maître with a beautiful feature in the middle. And that beautiful feature is going to be? Me. <laughs> Lush. Can you hold the bowl? We'll turn you into a bird bath. Yeah. I'll just stand. I actually would be so happy. Yeah, in summer, right? Yeah, in summer, but not in winter. You have to bring me inside. Bird bath in one hand, wine in the other. Yeah. <laughs> no, what's the, what's the feature going to be? Our garden is going to be here. So it's going to be a fully diverse garden. Everything from lavender to tomato plants and everything in between. I have got such a clear vision in my mind and I just can't wait to bring it to life, hey? When are we starting? Well, if you can, you can draw out let's the go. circle. Yeah, let's go. Let's go get on. my plan, let's do it, let's grow. All right, let's grow. <laughs> Shame, does that mean we have to say goodbye to the Bouladrome? So it was our daughter's first birthday and since she's our French daughter, she was born here, we needed to have a petanque court at her birthday for all of our friends to play one, at. Absolutely. Um, and so we had actually just cut down some trees out the back. So we used them as the border. Um, I built this with your dad and that was super fun. And it actually worked out perfectly because if you have, if you have somewhere to play petanque, all of the French people that came, they had their balls in their cars. Yeah, they they just, all have them with them. Yeah. Oh, sweet. P petonk time then and we did it and it was great we spent half the afternoon playing here the kids the grown-ups um i think it's been used since no the but baby it... comes and puts stones up, down her top <laughs> that's true yeah. yeah um we have to relocate this bench though i'm really proud of this bench it is a lovely bench model the bench model the bench it's very benchy look at me benching <laughs> it is actually just so beautiful just sitting here looking at the house having the sound of the river in the background all these birds gosh they're just oh, so many different types of birds aren't they this really is the perfect place where i have the seating area on the design on the, on the plan it's going to be here should we get the plan let's get the plan okay so this was my original design um when our main garden was going to be out the back. And now I've since adapted it. Also to be a little bit more realistic for the fact that our kids love running around on lawn and this design was to actually completely get rid of lawn. This was going to be the only lawn area. Um, just because of how much work it takes to maintain. Um, we're going to have lots of gravel. <laughs> this is the more integrated design where we still have the beautiful path leading you from the pedestrian gate to the front of the Maison de Maître. And here we're gonna have arches over the whole way for growing all sorts of things over, flowers or pumpkins, cucumbers, beans. This is a gravel path around here. And this is a big vegetable flower bed and another one in the center here. And off to the side here, we've got a seating area. And here along the fence, because it is quite shaded, I think we're just gonna put plants, bushes, flowers in here. It's not the best place for vegetables. I think this side here, because it gets shade from the oak tree, will be a perfect place for salad greens and things like that. And over on this side, it's gonna be tomatoes and herbs because it gets the most full sun just all day. Now. This plan is omitting two things which are currently in our garden and that is the huge plum tree and the other evergreen tree which I think they need to come out or at least the evergreen tree to start with because it lives about here. What do you think? About the trees? Yeah. It is so sad, but we're going to be replacing them with productive trees, feed more cherries. That sounds like a good plan. Yeah. So that's my plan. You ready to start? You ready to build? Yeah. Um, build outside for a change? It'll be nice, yeah. In do the fresh want, air? Do you want to um, uh, draw some circles on the lawn for me? Oh, now we're going to go.
Sure. Yes, let's go. Let's go.